So, I am Klaus and I'm uh, going to talk about how I work effectively with uh, Joomla. Uh, my Joomla experience dates back to uh, 2014 when I started work as a web developer. Um, and during the years since, I have uh, experienced uh, some of uh, uh, the ups and downs with uh, working with Joomla. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, during these years, I have um, been creating websites, um, setting them up. I've been supporting the website owners. I have been uh, migrating and updating old websites. Uh, and I have been uh, helping in restoring hacked websites, mostly due to the fact that they weren't updated properly. So, and these experiences have uh, shown me some of the common pitfalls uh, with Joomla websites. Uh, and. Uh, one other thing is that almost all of the website owners have too little information of their own websites. Uh, and also the websites themselves are uh, not documented properly. So it's, it's often a lot of detective work when, when uh, getting into working with an existing Joomla website. Other problems uh, are often that the structures of the website are really poor uh, and not thought through. Uh, and also websites tend to grow over the time and uh, when this isn't uh, considered from the beginning uh, the structure really tends to to fail. Uh, also the quality of data uh, are often poor which means that when uh, trying to uh, uh, salvage for instance uh, hacked websites it's a lot of uh, work to, to clean the data and get it working properly again. So in order to uh, avoid most of these pitfalls, um, I recommend making full use of Joomla core. And uh, with this, uh, I'd like to start with saying that uh, extensions are something that makes Joomla great, but also uh, extensions should always be uh, installed with great, with great care. Uh, some extensions are must, uh, but for the rest of them, we always must ask ourselves, is this a functionality that I can't get from core? Is this a functionality that we really, really need? And uh, when looking for extensions, it's always good to ask if this is a specific extension doing a specific task that we need, or is it a uh, really extensive ext extension doing a lot more than we really need? Uh, I, I usually, I'm from Sweden, so uh, we have IKEA. And IKEA is a great place uh, for shopping, uh, furniture and other stuff. And also they sell hot dogs in the, in the kiosk in IKEA. And I usually make the comparison that if you're going to sell hot dogs on your website, you don't need a, a, a complete IKEA. Um, so use, use what you need and, and try to, to not get uh, more than, <laughs> than that. And you always have to weigh pros and cons of using the extensions. When looking at the potentials that lie within the, the Joomla core, uh, something that's really obvious is that uh, articles are for saving content and uh, content should really go into articles. That's, that's where they are supposed to be. Relations between the content can be stored via categories and tags. And we can get the presentations uh, for the layouts using menu items and modules. And of course, there are a lot more potentials with the Joomla core. Um, some of them are, are, are extensions, but templates is sort of <laughs> built in. We have languages, ACL, and a lot more. But the three on top are the ones that, that uh, I'm going to talk about mostly. And these are the ones that make out the concept I'm, I'm going to share with you. So the first step uh, is that when we work with Joomla and we work with clients, we adapt something uh, called uh, separate content and presentation, which is a uh, design principle. And it states that uh, no presentation should be included within the content other than semantic HTML, like P tags, H1 tags, and, and stuff like that. But all other presentational, uh, uh, presentational uh, HTML, CSS, uh, JavaScripts, everything other than, than pure content should be placed somewhere else. 
the reason for this is easy. When, for instance, we help salvage uh, hacked websites and, and try to, to get content out, we, it's, it's filled with, with a lot of stuff that is, is uh, not there for the content. It's, 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 not, it's not useful. Uh, if you also do a revamp of a website, you update the template, change the layouts, change the templates. You, if you have a, a lot of presentation within the content, you need to go through each and every article, finding these presentational parts and, and removing them or changing them, which makes changing the layout on, and the, the template design of, of a website really, really tedious. So with this in mind, um, basic options for content comes via articles. We can add relations for content uh, using tags and categories, as I said before. And we also nowadays can have really advanced options for content using custom fields, uh, which has been really, really great. Uh, regarding these relations, uh, most of this is uh, do, used uh, using uh, categories. For instance, a, a common relation is, is that if you have a blog, all the articles within this, that blog is, is related to each other within the, the, the content, the context of, of, of the blog. And I think most of you who have set up a uh, Joomla website have set up at least one blog. Uh, but we can have a lot more uh, complex um, relations, such as different parts of, of the blog has articles containing similar topics. So maybe we want uh, relations between similar topics. And uh, most of you probably have used tags one or time or least uh, for just this case. But tags can be used for much more than uh, just uh, topic relations in, in a blog. I'm going to go into that even more. Uh, the presentation as I said, is something that we really want to put outside of the, of the content. And uh, doing this, we uh, use the most basic options, which is menu items. So we have the single article, we have the blog layout, uh, and a, a lot of more menu items. But these are the, are the main ones. Uh, and to create advanced presentations for a, a website, we often use uh, modules, which is great because we can change up a way your page looks really easy using modules. But this is still kind of limited, especially when you consider that you shouldn't put presentation uh, in the articles and you should keep all the content in the articles. So how do you do to place different parts of uh, a page content in using modules to create these uh, layouts? So as I said, most um, hmm. uh, most presentations begins with a menu item. Uh, as I said, we have the single article, category blog, featured, tagged items. And these are really simple layouts, but they are really useful. And uh, building on these menu items, we can add modules. But as I said, if we have all the contents in articles, we need to have modules showing these articles. And this is where, where we get a problem. So these are some of the modules I found in Joomla core that actually show some content from, from uh, articles. But what these have common is that none of them actually show a complete article. So you only get like a title of the, of the module. Anybody have a, a different module in mind that you usually use? for displaying articles? Core, core module or extension? Preferably core module, but if you have an extension as well. Yeah. Which ones do you uh, use? Latest news and Yeah. Uh, that usually gets the best layout. And you can modify it the way you want to. Yeah. Using like a lot of tags, articles, categories, whatever you, you want, you can display it with latest news. Yeah. So um, when using uh, core, uh, which I always try to stick to when I, when I do something using Joomla, the one that sticks out from, from the previous ones is articles category. And this is due to the fact that it actually has quite an extensive category filter uh, that you can, can select the articles that you really want. 
You can also exclude IDs, uh, including dynamically, meaning that if you have the module placed in a blog, you can exclude the current article so that it lists all the other articles in the same category. Uh, you can also filter for featured articles, date and author and such things like that. And you also have grouping, which is a good option to have. And the module also has extensive display options where you can toggle on and off different parts of, uh, uh, of uh, the, the, the article you want to display. So if you want the title shown or not, if you want the title to be linked or not, intro text and things like that. But the thing is that you can only show the intro text. The full article is not there available. But actually it is available in the code sent to the page but not in the module so if you could access it in the layout you could display it so what's great about modules is that is that you can use alternative layouts and this is great because it doesn't affect joomla really it, it you still use the core and you still use the module that you have and, and more or less intact you just put a different kind of face on top of it So by adding alternative layouts, we can now build a website where we have all the content that we want placed in articles. Uh, we can have relations for these articles via categories and tags. And we can uh, present these on menu items and extend on that with modules using alternative layouts. However, we can't really make full use of uh, of uh, tags using this article uh, cat articles category module. So imagine if we could use a module and select articles based on any parameter and we could display any of the available content parts of an article freely from within the module uh, user interface. Um, much like the extension you talked about. Uh, and Imagine it's hard and I usually tend to uh, look what is available in Joomla and not what's not available. But luckily for us, the web developers, we also have clients and clients are really good at not thinking inside the box. They really think just freely. And uh, when taking uh, taking on a project and, and letting the client really want to express what they want to have and, and, and you, you challenge yourself to, to uh, see if that's possible, you can achieve great things. Uh, so I recently had a client where we uh, were to build a, a actually redo a, a website with with a lot of different parts. One thing they wanted was to have multiple blogs on the website and all of the blogs should be uh, aggregated into one large blog which was to be displayed on the on the front page. But different parts of this organization had uh, their own blogs displayed on, on the sub parts of the website. And also uh, there was a cross section to be used um, where sneak peeks from the different blogs were to be used on yet other pages. Uh, this created a lot of relationships between the content uh, and there were other things that were to be related to one another and displayed back and forth. Uh, so uh, that uh, made a challenge. And uh, we also wanted to, uh, to uh, address the structural growth of the website because we knew the website were going to grow and is going to grow uh, where not just adding content to, uh, to blogs, but also new pages would come and go. So we needed to set up a structure where it was easy to, to add yet more pages to the website, but still keep the structure more or less intact. So in order to realize these uh, requests, uh, we had to do some development. And um, I had to use something more than the alternative layouts I used before using alternative uh, or articles category. Uh, so what we really needed was that we were able to select articles based on any parameter for the article. Uh, we also needed to have some kind of flexible output where we could have a module 
And instead of having tons of different uh, alternative layouts, we, we could, within the module interface, change up what was shown and what was not shown. And also, we really wanted to reduce the structural fingerprints. And this basically means that we wanted to, uh, to reduce the repeated structures for the website to bare minimum. And uh, this would remove a lot of the excessive uh, setups that we would have to do each time we added a new page to the website because they had uh, a subgroup of, of content that needed their own their own microsite on this page and, and it needed a lot of modules and a lot of uh, other things connected to it. So we, we wanted to really reduce that so we didn't have to add like 20 things for, for a page that was to be added in the future. So one thing that we could do to reduce um, modules used on the website uh, is to use parameters that are available via the menu item. And I like to call this dynamic parameters because the, the parameters can change for the, mod, the one and the same module depending on what page it's shown on. So they are dynamic towards that module. <clears throat> and uh, what parameters do we have from a menu item? We can actually get a category IDs. We can get category children, whether or not to show child categories or not how deep into the category tree we go. We can get article ID from the menu item and we can also get tag IDs. So what about if we collect all of these into the module and use them for displaying articles and selecting articles? Well, I did some development and uh, the result of that was that we now have a module that can uh, have an extensive option for article selection. We can choose any parameter of the, of the article. Uh, we can uh, use dynamic parameters which really, really reduce the, the amount of modules needed because we can have one module for a whole set of pages but it can get different content due to the fact that we can use the menu item uh, parameters. And all of these parameters can be used exclusively or inclusively, so we can add or retract to the selection we have using, using uh, these. So for instance, we choose a specific category, only look in this one, but look for any tags uh, from the menu item, but never use any articles to have a specific tag, for instance. So by combining this, we get a really, really extensive options for how to select articles. Also, I added a lot of uh, display options, uh, looking at how they did for uh, articles category. Uh, I think that was great, but there were still things missing. So basically, you can toggle off, toggle on and off basically all parts of, of the article. Uh, you can add grouping to the output, so you can group articles depending on different uh, parameters. Uh, use pagination, because if you have a module that collects a lot of articles, maybe you want to have like a blog layout within the module itself. So you can select the, the module to show 10 articles, but if there are more you can paginate. And it doesn't affect page load because only 10 articles are loaded at a time. Uh, and we have a lot of layout parameters included in, in this module, which means that we can uh, address the actual layout from within the module interface uh, and change things up without having to redo the alternative layout for, for the module. Uh, and also including stuff like language constants. And this is really useful again to reduce the number of modules needed because this website that we worked on was a multi-language uh, website so we had the same kind of pages but on different languages so instead of having to set up the same set of, of modules for different languages we can use the same module and just use language constants for this for the static uh, texts things like the module title and things like that So, anybody interested to see a demonstration of what this module can do? 
Before I go on and show this demonstration, I would uh, like to give a quick shout out to Advanced Module Manager by Regular Labs, which is a great extension. Uh, what this does, it's, it further helps to reduce the need of, of uh, separate modules for different things because you have really, really extensive options for how to uh, decide where the module should be shown and not shown. Uh, and also Warp Themes by Utheme. It's their old set of, of uh, themes which are based on their Warp, uh, warp framework. Uh, what's great about the uh, Utheme uh, themes is that they have a lot of module positions, so you don't have to redo the redo the theme. You can you can really select where you want to put modules, uh, and it's also really easy to customize because they have a system for customizing it without having to worry about uh, updating the the theme itself. So let's go to the demo. This on full screen? No, it's not. So this is uh, the website, or it's it's actually a uh, a uh, small copy of, of the website with with dummy data. <laughs> but what basically we had is is we have the front page showing uh, all the different blogs the website has. This one has two different blogs. We have the news blog and the education blog. But they are both present on this page. Uh, on the actual project, we had um, a short bar below this with the latest articles also. And uh, for each time anybody adds an article to the website, independent of, of what category they place it in, it pops up on the front page. Uh, they also could select uh, on the this side, they could select specific articles to be shown uh, on, on statically uh, using tags. They have specific tags to, to tag an article with and uh, the module itself pick those, those up and place them. So these two ones are actually placed using just one module. And this is a uh, slider which picks up every featured articles <coughs> and shows them. So if we go into the website, we follow this one. Looks like a YouTube clip, and it actually is. And what's great about this is that all of these articles, all the content for these are within the articles of Joomla. So any image connected to the, to the <coughs> article itself is, is the article image. And we use the intro image and the uh, full article image for the different layouts. And what's great about this is that the, if we change up the layout later on, it's it's easy because we have the the centralized place where where the images are, are stored. Same with the content and things like that. And this is not a new concept. This is basically how Joomla is supposed to to work. Uh, the thing is though that what we've seen with our clients is that a lot of times uh, users who who administrate their websites don't really know what to do and don't really understand how to use Joomla. Uh, due to poor education, due to poor documentation of how to handle their own website. And what we really pride ourselves in is that we want the website to be used by the website owner themselves. We don't want to be the ones that update their website. We want them to be able to, to run their websites themselves. Uh, and using articles is something that has really made it much more easy for our customers and made much less uh, support errands for us where we have to help somebody to change a title on a module or things like that. Uh, and this uh, uh, video actually replaces the main article, the full article image uh, using a custom field. So in the layout it looks for this custom field for the article. And if that's set, it shows a, uh, a video instead of, of the other one. So this, the client uh, had, among other things, education as, as part of, the, of their business. So what I've set up here is, is uh, mimicking 
their their um, educational parts of their website. So, as I said before, we have the the tags that we we all most of us use tags for, I guess. That is topic tags. And when I set up tags for a website, I really like to nest them. So I have two tiers of tags, with the first tier being just the category for the tags. So I have tags for topics. So the first tier tag is called topics. And then the second tier is the actual topics. What this makes it possible is that I can use the first tier to select whether or not the tags should be shown or not within the layouts if I do alternative layouts. So that makes it possible to add a lot more tags to an article than what's shown on the front end. So going into following one of these, we will get to a uh, tagged items menu item. And uh, the layout here is similar to any blog layout. So if we go to back to the to the actual blog, we can go. This is underneath education. This article. So if we click here or we click in the in the um, breadcrumbs, we can go to the to the actual blog layout. And as we see, the layout is the same for these. Uh, and this is made really simple because this is just an alternative layout for the actual module. So all of these pages shows just the module. And uh, the content for the menu item itself is actually not shown on the website, which makes it uh, easy because we have full control of what we show via this really adaptable module. Um, one of the most uh, complicated things were there, uh, like they had projects. And in this case, uh, I'm representing this with faculties of, of a school. So what these pages were is single article pages for this each project, or in this case, each faculty. So we have the up on the, the, the top part of, of the screen, we have um, the actual single article displayed. And then we have some uh, modules displayed on this page. And the way these uh, different the different content here is gathered is is used by both categories and tags and combinations of these so for instance below the main content we have uh, a part of the educational blog and it can be set to uh, showing just a, a few articles and uh, we see that we can have the same uh, layout that we use on all the other pages because we use the same module alternative layout for this. And the way this works is that um, it gathers a specific, uh, specific, I'm not sure if it's a specific or it's, if it's dynamic, but it gathers all the articles from that, from that category of articles. We also have on the top right, we have uh, a contact for this faculty. Uh, and this is actually, a article with the article image and the article title and then we have some custom fields for this and uh, what we'd like to do is that set up the custom fields for different type of categories so using categories to categorize different types of content uh, so instead of using a CCK we, we turn Joomla articles using uh, custom fields and categories to set up sort of a CCK We have this article actually link back to itself, and uh, this article is doesn't have a menu item, as you can see by by the eight here in the in the URL, but it's placed under a blog layout which is called teachers. So when following this, uh, the link to to uh, the article itself, Joomla will will route it to the proper page, which is this blog layout. So going to Harland's own page, we have his image on the left, or the right, I mean. <laughs> uh, and the main article uh, in the top. Also below this, as he is a teacher, we have a listing of, of courses that he teaches. 
And these courses, again, are gathered via tags. And this time, it's a module that gathers uh, dynamic tags. And the tag it looks for uh, is, is a teacher tag, and he, which is the tag of himself. So for this structure to work, we need to replicate each teacher as, as their own tag. Uh, but other than that, we don't need much more uh, structure for this. So these are actually... Could, could you have done that with using a custom field name instead of a tag? Custom f uh, well, the, the thing is that... I've, I've actually, this is, this is interesting. Uh, this is something I'm, I'm looking to do in the future. Uh, and instead of tagging Harlan with himself, okay. I actually... And, and tagging, and these are, these are actually articles within the courses category in Joomla. And these course articles are tagged with, with his tag as well. So that's the way it connects. But what, I, what I'm, I'm looking to do in the future, uh, which I was going to come to next, but, but it's, it's a good question, is that custom, article, uh, custom fields actually can provide the same functionality without having to set up this tag tree. Because each time we add a teacher, we need to add the article for it, which is simple. But we also need to add tags for it. Uh, our client can easily add a, a new article to the correct uh, category. But when it comes to tags, they need to know more about Joomla and they need to set up the tag in the right place. So it becomes a, a risk using custom fields instead would mean that they didn't have to create any new tags. So we had less tags to work with. And we can actually say that this custom field can only be added to the articles that should really have it. Because uh, with tags, you can add them to, to anything in Joomla, which is a risk. So yes, you could. <laughs> and I'm looking to do that in the future. Uh, so it gathers, anyway, it gathers uh, articles from the courses uh, category and places them below using the tag found on this menu item uh, and the menu item it's is actually gathering it from the article displayed in this blog layout uh, if we go back to teachers we have a module showing all the articles in the teachers category uh, this module is actually shown on the people category as well where it shows both the board and the teachers this is a category blog menu item, but it's not showing anything from within the menu item itself, but it's showing one module, module and it's just one single module. And it's using the grouping option. So it groups depending on what category the articles are in. So in this case, we have uh, two groups or two categories, a board category and a teacher's category, and it dynamically just fetches these. So if I go into the board, and I go back to the board sub sub menu item, which is a blog menu item for just the board. It's the same module again, but this time it via dynamically available parameters. I'll fly here. Uh, it gathers the category. So the same module can be, show, can be used showing different uh, subsections of the category tree using the dynamic parameters. So if you go to a teacher again, we go into the single uh, article page, dynamically created under the blog, and we can actually follow back to uh, the courses. So we are interested in um, biomedical engineering. Let's go see that. This takes us to the courses page of the website because Joomla finds that there is a uh, menu item placed called the uh, courses, which is a blog layout showing uh, the courses category. So it picks that up. And here it shows the article itself. And on the side, we have this module. And the module is used to show uh, uh, custom fields. So when the customer adds, uh, uh, new courses they don't have to figure out how to 
how to style and how to place them to get the things in, in different places. They don't have to work with modules at all. They only work with their own single article, in this case, an article called biomedical engineering. So for that, they have a different tab with the custom fields and they enter all those, those datas, uh, which makes it easy for the customer to know what data they need to fill in so they don't forget stuff. And it makes it easy for us to style it and place it and make the layouts for it uh, without having to worry about how they put in the data. So you use alternative layouts, create these layouts? Yeah. So the module is, is set up in a way that it makes it super easy to create alternative layouts. Uh, basically, all the parts of the, of the article, um, the PHP for that is... is uh, centralized within the module so so when you create an alternative layout it's it's easy to to just write not not uh, not as sure as with the short codes seen in the, in the presentation before but but if you know some php it's it's really easy to to add your your html layout around this and switching up parts and, and removing parts and everything is toggleable via the module interface so if we don't want the custom fields in the layout, we can use this layout, but just toggle off the custom fields. So we can use the same layouts for a, a large amount of, of different layouts that have the same uh, structure, the same HTML structure, but may, may, may have different content. And also using uh, layout parameters in the module user interface, we can actually alter the way uh, a layout looks so for instance if we go to we can go to uh, the blog layout so I'm just getting there So looking at this blog layout, if we want to change it up, it's, it's, we don't even have to go into the HTML <coughs> or the, the layouts and the files. It's all accessible. Most of it is, is accessible via the module. So it's the blog layout module. It's one single module for all the blogs. Uh, so here we can change the limit, the, the amount of, of articles shown on a single page. We can add pagination and, and remove pagination. What this means is that it will show a pagination at the bottom which will make it possible to load the next 10. Otherwise it will just load those 10 and, and no others. We can uh, decide if we want to show the featured articles or hide them, the current article. We can uh, hide the current article or we can actually select only the current article. Um, if we want to have a module on like for instance, let's open yeah, another tab. For instance, this page, it's a single article and we want to use content from that article in the sidebar. So this is a module that's the same module for all of these pages and it gets a, per, a dynamic parameter, uh, which is the item ID of the actual article. And we can access that article in the module and, and show that, that data. Uh, and why just uh, exclude article IDs? We can also include article IDs, meaning that this module will only pick up those specific articles. So if you make a, a for instance, a long uh, front page and you want to show an article on that front page and you want to show a specific, it, you don't need to change up. It doesn't have to be dynamic, but it's just we, we want a, a section on this page showing this article. You can add that article ID. Uh, so for the tags, we can choose if, choose if we want to use normal selection, which means that we can select any available tags. Uh, and you can select multiple tags, of course. Or we can use the dynamic option, which gets its um, tags from, from the menu item. We can in include and exclude. And uh, to make this even more uh, useful, to combine because maybe you have a tag that you use for not showing content you can 
show some tags, but you can exclude some other tags. So you have a selector here, and or or. So these two uh, sections actually is, is for the same thing, tags. But you can, you can have, for instance, dynamic tags and combine that with uh, some specific tags, or you can exclude other tags. Uh, so the options are, are almost limitless. We have categories. And in this case, since we use a single module for all of the different category layouts, instead of using the menu item category layouts, um, we pick up the, the category dynamically. So each category, uh, category blog menu item this module is shown on, it picks up that category and displays the articles from that category. Uh, it also picks up as I listed before, it picks up the number of children for that category to pick up articles from. Uh, if we choose normal, we can uh, can decide this within the, the interface itself. But let's keep it dynamic. Uh, you can decide on how to sort the articles. And here you have grouping and how the grouping is supposed to be sorted. Uh, we have uh, more filters for authors and dates, so a lot of different kind of sorting on the dates, relative and range dates. But then we have the display options, and this is quite daunting, but when you get into it, it's really simple. And uh, what I did is I divided it with the dividers to, to sort of group it together for what it is. So the first part is for debugging, uh, because as this module can gather a lot of articles and you gather it dynamically, sometimes it can be hard to predict what content actually is, is gathered. So you can turn on a debug message and it'll tell you a lot of stuff if it doesn't show what you want it to show. Uh, it helps out in the settings for, for selecting articles. So we have a lot of settings. This is for the main part, the content part of the article, if you want the title to be shown or not. And all of these settings are, are made so it's as easy as possible for, for any administrator using this to understand what settings are relevant and what's are, which ones are not. So if we don't want to show the title, we don't no longer have the option for whether or not the title should be linked. Uh, so. It, it, it filters for you the, the, the parameters that is, is viable. Uh, the content, you can have the intro or the full article of the, of the text of the article. And the intro text can be clipped to set the mount. And you can have, <laughs> add a read more. And you can have the read more with the title. Uh, you can choose the image. And you can choose if it should use the caption field for the images, which I guess not many people use, but it's there. You can link the image and you can also use the links for the article found in images and links. And what's fun is that uh, what the client wanted is for, for the main page, they wanted these, in, in Swedish we call it puffar, puffs, some highlights to, to different parts of the, of the website. But sometimes they wanted to show a picture and, and show some text pointing towards something that wasn't actually because this this link goes to the article itself but sometimes they wanted to, to point it somewhere else so how did we achieve that well we used the the links from uh, images and links tab in the article and we can actually override the article link using any of these so if a link is, is available within, for instance, link A, the link shown on the front page will, will be overridden with this link. So you can have an external link or, or any other link instead of the, the article link itself. Uh, again, putting all the, all the power into the administrator of, of the, the website that, that's doing all the content, the editor, basically. So the editor from the article itself decides what happens with the, this article? We, where does it point? What, what information is shown and, and other things like that. We can uh, have all the dates and authoring, author uh, stuff shown or not. We can have it linked or not, but if we hide it, it will close down. Um, we can have the tags shown or not. Uh, what's actually available or if we 
this time we don't use any tags because there are no tags chosen. But if we choose a tag and go back to the display option, we can actually choose to show... Hmm. Of course it doesn't work. Okay, so let's close out of that. I'll just open a new one. Okay, so if we want to show the tags, we can uh, choose to show only the tags selected by this module. So for instance, you have an article with the tags that are topic tags. You want these to be displayed by in the module. But you might also have, for instance, uh, a course that has uh, a relation tag for the, for the teacher. You don't want to show that tag on the front page. So you can set this module to only show the ones that you select to be shown. <coughs> so going back to the blogs one. And you also have the chosen to, to show the grouping header and stuff like that. And uh, what's neat for, for me as a developer is that when I go to the, the, the advanced tab, I can choose the, the different layouts. So I have a couple of these, but I try to create them as, um, as um, general as possible. Uh, and within the layout, I always keep all of the sections from the article available so that if I turn on the display in the display options, the article layout can be used for that. But if I want a really limited, really limited layout, I just toggle the, the options off in the display options. So I can use that layout later with other options. <coughs> or if the client changes their mind, then now let's, let's re-add the, the author link. We don't have to go into the alternative layout itself. Uh, and also, we have a lot of parameters and stuff added here, uh, which is that we can change out the, the actual HTML put out by the same layouts. So instead of going out into the layout itself and, and tweaking the layout, we can just tweak it from, from within the uh, user interface here. So we can select what kind of tag this is using. We can also add CSS classes to different sections of the module. Uh, again, making it possible to change up the way the module looks without having to redo the, the alternative layout. Uh, and down here we have something called bootstrap size. Uh, before I did this, uh, developed this, this module, I didn't realize what this was used for. I never, I never found the use for it. But what it says in the, in the tooltip is that it specifies how many columns the module will use. So for instance, if uh, we have a layout that uh, uses uh, uh, uses columns for showing, if you want a grid with uh, with a lot of articles, you can use this, uh, and it, the value here will be used within the layout itself. So to create the dynamic amount of of, uh, of grids columns based on the number you choose, and actually what I did for the layout I created with the grid is that the number zero it would be stupid to have zero columns. The zero actually calculates how many articles are shown and, and produces the same amount of, of uh, columns for that one. So whether or not the, the customer, the client themselves, add them or remove a content from that category showing in that module, the number of uh, columns will adapt dynamically. But in this case, it's actually uh, used as a, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, a part. So seven out of ten is uh, seven tenths uh, of the of the full width of this is where the text is shown. So let's go back here. So we have the image here, which is shown, and maybe the client says, "Well, it looks stupid because the image is too large and it's too little text." So going in here and saying that the text should then take up eight tenths of that width. We just save that. 
and we changed up the layout fast and easy. Um, so what I tried to do is, is to, to create a lot of these places where we can, can alter the module itself from within the module without having to do any development. Uh, everything is, is toggleable within the layout. <coughs> well, I guess that's it. Do we have any questions? I can add up, I have them here. Uh, do you prefer to use child categories or tags? Uh, actually, I prefer to always nest uh, things. I nest my categories, but I also nest my tags. So I use child tags and child categories. And depending on, on what is needed, um, I set up the structure for it. What I really like to do is to, to have a function for the use or, or to use the categories as a function, not only to, to categorize articles, but why do I categorize this? How can I use this categorization? So when I use child categories is because probably I want to show the top, the top category, for instance, the blogs shown here, it's, it's a two tier category structure uh, where we can show the whole category or just subcategories. So a different question was how to keep track of core changes in the views when using alternative layouts. Um, not really sure what this refers to. Um, mostly this is, this is the presentational layer of Joomla. So unless there are some, some changes in, 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 in PHP or, or vulnerabilities, the layouts themselves really doesn't, it doesn't really matter how the layouts in, in the core Joomla looks, because if you create alternative layouts for the modules, these are the ones that you want to use. And if you want to change up the, the, the style of the website, you change these. And, and so you separate, separate the core Joomla and, and this. Uh, would it be safer to use custom fields instead of tags? Uh, um, safer in the regard that less messy because the clients, the, the website owners don't have to go into that part of Joomla. Uh, and, and the less they have to go into different parts of Joomla, the less they have to, to know about Joomla, but they can still achieve the same, uh, the same functionality. So I would say it's preferable. Uh, yes. Yeah. It, it can, you know, you start a project and the customer says you want to categorize things like this. Then after half a year, they change their mind and they want to do something else. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and then you have, do you prefer custom fields or do you prefer child and child things and tags? I'd say that um, there are different, different, um, uses for this. Uh, in, in the case of, of having a blog and have topics, yeah. these topics should be really thought out and, and we, we try to educate our customers to, to tell them to, to really think through what, what's, what's the topics that, that are general but still divide your content into to substantial parts, uh, similar parts, and, and to really put a thought into that so that they don't... <laughs> a lot of websites can have like a hundred different topics yeah. for a blog, but looking at each of them is like two or three articles. So it, it's it's not really a category, uh, a sub a subsection. So uh, categories for a blog, topics for a blog should basically be like s set in stone more or less, and and really thought through, and and not as as easily changed. I think you were about the flexibility when you talk to a customer after half a year or one year or something. Yeah. And they change their mind. Yeah, and I think I think the way I would like to use tags and custom fields is that tags for something that is not available within Joomla before. But for instance, as we talked about uh, tagging uh, uh, teachers, which are already available as articles, we can set up an SQL custom field gathering that data from the articles themselves. So in that case, we could reduce the, redund uh, reduce the, the amount of, of duplicates. 
So to duplicate uh, no, our article as a tag is, is redundant if you could use the custom field for it. So depending on, on if it's available or not, uh, I would like to use custom fields and uh, otherwise tags is, is their own, uh, their own uh, entity, uh, sort of. What is the name of the module? Well, it's a good question. Uh, <laughs> Where is it? Let's go back here. So we've, we've been talking about uh, a lot about this, uh, things I would like to add, as we said, custom fields. Uh, also been looking at front-end editing, so make it even easier for the editor to, to make the editing of the content from the module displayed on the front-end. Uh, questions we are asking now. The module is called the uh, Pix Builder, and if you would like to ask me more about it and, and discuss possibilities and, and things, you can email me at uh, class plus jab18 at pixpro.net. Uh, and I'll, I'll be looking forward to talking to you after this presentation and, and throughout this event. So, more questions. Do you have new tags manually or... But how... I'll say, I think this is... Re uh, <coughs> but you have to set tags manually to the tag hierarchy. Yeah, exactly. So tags have to be manually added. If we use custom fields, <laughs> we can actually dynamically add them via, via SQL custom fields. Um, so intro text and text image sizes. Uh, images should always be, uh, be cropped to the proper size. Uh, <laughs> this affects page loads. Uh, so before we do anything, before the customer adds any content, we decide on the layouts, the, the, the basic layouts and, and how, how a page should look. And then we find out, as all web nowadays is uh, responsive, we find out the common sizes used for, for small screens and large screens. And then we decide on, on formats for the images. And then the customer is, is supposed to keep to these formats. Uh, and it's easier said than done. <laughs> so. Do we have more time for one single question, final question? Have you ever had the situation that core modules are not enough to fulfill all client requests? Yeah, basically most of the times because uh, pages we do are more than, I think Joomla core is great when you have more or less a small website with static pages or maybe a blog. But as soon as you add some, some more complex content and you add relations, Joomla core really doesn't cut it. And at least for us, as we tend to tend to want to have the customer able to edit, edit their own content using articles, uh, Joomla core doesn't, doesn't cut it. You can always use the custom, uh, custom module, a custom HTML module, but that really makes a mess in the long, long run. Uh, so we uh, we uh, usually extend Joomla. And also, things like Akiba Backup is vital for having a website up and running in the long run. So we always add some things to, to Joomla Core. And I think that you shouldn't be afraid of using extensions, but you should use them carefully. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs>